This is Dingus, a deep reinforcement learning AI cube, still with hands, and now a hardened criminal. In this run, Dingus is role-playing as a criminal in a break-in. His job is to scour the location, find valuable loot, and get it back to the van at the entrance. The valuable pieces of loot here are pearls, stereo systems, and wine. There's also a bunch of trash to mislead Dingus, consisting of trash cola, James gum, and yuckos. Dingus has five levels to overcome. The artist pad, the apartment, the occultist apartment, the museum, and finally, the agency. The hardest of all the levels. Each run puts Dingus in a random room with the loot locations randomized. Dingus gets a positive reward for finding loot, pushing it towards the van, and getting the loot out of the entrance. He also gets small bonus rewards for doing that faster as well. Dingus gets a negative reward for timing out and falling out of the entrance. Will Dingus become a successful criminal? Or will he just wind up bumbling his way into the big house? Let's find out. And so Dingus begins in his new world, completely confused. And so he will remain confused for a very long time until he understands what actually gets him rewards. So let's just speed him up a bit here. Yep, and we can see he learned literally nothing this entire run. Unfortunately, next level we will see little change as well. Either that, or Dingus has regretted his life of crime and is now trying to be a guitarist too. Don't do it, Dingus. There's no money in that either. The next level doesn't appear to be any different either, until suddenly, Dingus develops an intense interest in the staircase. He fearlessly climbs up, stacks it on the stereo, and seemingly recognizes the wine as his objective. However, he climbs right past it and proceeds to do a sick flip off the edge instead. He quickly recovers and then immediately runs back up the stairs. Again, he seems to recognize that the wine needs to come with him as he sort of tries to bring it with him, only to whiff and do another sick flip. Seemingly addicted to the thrill, Dingus now proceeds to only keep doing sick flips until he runs out of time. The only thing the next run reveals is that Dingus is still good at climbing stairs. Oh, and nice table landing, Dingus. Dingus spends the next 167 seconds doing sick flips off the top floor. The next run we see Dingus in is the museum. Unfortunately, without stairs to do sick flips off of, Dingus wanders around completely aimlessly. Honestly, this is a little concerning. At this stage, I'd kind of hoped the AI would have started to realize that the main important action is to push loot towards the entrance. Okay, so here we are in the occult house and there appears to be a bit of a revelation on Dingus' end here. After doing some sick flips, Dingus seems to realize that he needs to do something with the stereo. Unfortunately, the thing he does do with the stereo is move it as far away as possible from the entrance, which is super not useful. But the fact that he realized he should be interacting with it at all is a bit promising. He proceeds to fart around again, messing with the stereo for a bit before going up to do another sick flip, when he suddenly seems to be hit with a moment of clarity, pushing the speaker off with him and then intermittently pushing it back towards the entrance. He doesn't actually get it across the line, but there's some further growth here, and he will get a reward for getting it closer to the exit. Back in the artist's pad, we can see that Dingus does indeed show a lot more interest in valuable loot at this moment. Both the wine and the stereo are getting a lot of pushing and prodding from Dingus, in between a bunch of random nonsensical wandering. Then Dingus comes back for the wine, and finally, finally, success! The wine has been pushed out the entrance, and Dingus got a healthy reward for it. But we're not done yet. Dingus next makes a charge for the speakers, pushing them into the wall near the entrance, and after getting distracted again, he goes back and pushes it out of the entrance too. That's two out of four items complete this time around, a vast improvement over zero. The next location is the agency. Two pearls have spawned near the entrance, however, so he's in with a chance of getting some good rewards here. I cannot even begin to explain the start of his approach to this level. After a quick detour to the left, he seems to remember why he's here, beelining for the pearls, only to grab one pearl and move it as far away possible from the entrance. Dingus, why? Dingus, why? <laughs> he then grabs the wine, starts ringing it upstairs before he seems to realize he's a complete idiot, and starts trying to take it back to the entrance. He grapples with the concept of walls for a while before he finally gets it back into the entry area, where he knocks it into the pearl. And then the pearl is successfully delivered. This apparently blows Dingus's mind so hard that he stutters for a long time before just noping out and proceeding to do a bunch of sick flips on the left. However, like a uni student with a deadline due in an hour, Dingus suddenly realizes he has no time left and makes a mad dash back to the wine, getting it out of the entrance for more rewards. Next, we wind up in the museum, and after initial confusion, Dingus demonstrates he knows exactly how to handle balls, and then demonstrates that he has no idea how to handle hysteria. 
Unfortunately, he accomplished nothing else until the final few seconds where he decides to move out to the Pearl. No understandings seem to have been made regarding stereos. Okay, Dingus clearly needs a bit more training to make any further headway here. Oh, but first they had this run which cracked me up. Clearly the pressure was getting to Dingus, and he has a complete freak out, completely chugging the wine, and then wedges the stereo inside the table as best as he can manage. I feel you, Dingus. It's gonna be okay one day. Maybe. Right after that outburst, Dingus spawns into the apartment with a very straightforward layout. Dingus wastes no time getting the pearl out of the entrance, and then, clearly unhappy with being efficient, he decides to take a trip upstairs, then jumps back downstairs and delivers another pearl. Apparently he really enjoys this process, as once again Dingus goes straight upstairs, jumps back down, and then delivers the next pearl. He then goes upstairs again, what are you doing Dingus? Drops back down, and finally he goes for the stereo. Is this it? Is this our first success? No! Haha! <laughs> the idiot high fives the stereo and goes back to running upstairs repeatedly. <laughs> he just... <laughs> I, don't, I don't know... I don't know what you're playing at Dingus. Oh, but then, suddenly, a moment of clarity. After his most recent concussion, Dingus eyes the stereo and starts pushing it straight out of the entrance. And that's it! The first level has been completed. Unfortunately, the next room is the Agency, which is by far the hardest, and so I don't think he's going to succeed here. In fact, in an apparent attempt to make it clear that he won't, Dingus ignored the wine bottle right next to the entrance and proceeded to do sick flips for the next 120 seconds. He finally gets rid of the wine bottle, then does some more sick flips until finally he does something I want you to remember. He climbs up the middle staircase, discovering two more valuable pieces of loot. Being a certified master ball handler, he quickly pushes the ball towards the entrance, falls off, and loses interest in the whole thing, trying to get one more sick flip off before time runs out. He fails, just like he deserves. So next up we start in the museum, and now Dingus is a man on a mission. He goes straight for the stereo, gets distracted by the ball, and then manages to flip himself upside down. I've fallen, and I can't get up! Okay. This is a disaster. Because he's upside down, all of Dingus' input data is now coming in reversed. He has no idea what is going on and he flails around confused and distraught. After 120 seconds of this crap has passed, I can see that he is never going to recover this run, and I decide to take a look at what all the other Dinguses are doing at this exact same time. Because there are 54 other Dinguses training at the same time, I imagine one of them has to be doing something more interesting than this one. I see an agency Dingus playing around with wine, a similarly lost museum Dingus wandering around aimlessly, Oh, and a cult room dingus is doing pretty well actually. Until he gets a bit too eager to deliver and falls off the stage with his wide delivery. I decide to check back on our dingus and yep, still upside down and struggling. I watch a few more dinguses and yep, they seem to be about as stupid as our dingus. I swap back to proto dingus a little late and I'm just in time to see him successfully deliver a stereo and then fall right off the stage. Oh dingus. This is apparently a bit of a trend for Dingus because in his next museum visit, he quickly and masterfully steals two pearls, then gets his hands on some wine and, uh, with a fair bit of finagling, gets it out of the building, along with himself. Well, that was three out of four there, Dingus, so honestly, not that bad. Skipping forward a bit, we find another interesting run, this time in the occult room. He quickly goes into the side rooms and struggles with the pearl, but he eventually gets it sorted and goes back for the wine. The wine does not go so smoothly. Dingus struggles with this concept of walls, and gives up, going into the main room, quickly sorting out the pearl, and then sorting the upstairs wine. Surely this was it. All he had to do was go back into the side room, which he had done before, and bring the wine into the entrance. But no. Dingus, no. That's not how walls work. What a complete disaster. Dingus does not recover from this, and continues to believe if he bangs against this wall hard enough, he can prove that his world is actually engaging in simulation theory. He fails, even though he is a simulation. A little later, we spawn back into the occult apartment again. This time though, Dingus is hungry to succeed, and to keep climbing up and down the stairs needlessly. Oh, so Dingus, what is this maneuver? <laughs> How did you do that? However, after having his fun, Dingus finally goes into the side room, collects the final pearl, and brings it to the entrance marking off completion for one of the harder rooms. It's not fast progress here, but the cube is seemingly getting better. A little later we have another museum run. I'd always wondered if Dingus would learn the museum pretty quickly as it didn't require using stairs. But the museum does have its own difficulties, such as requiring Dingus to search a lot further than any other map exempting the agency. Dingus has seemingly found his feet however, as he manages to complete this museum map in under 100 seconds. That's three maps down. 
only a simple starting level which is suspiciously not showing up anymore, and the agency is left. But the agency is so much harder than all the others. Speaking of, we have another agency run shortly afterwards. Anyways, this agency map isn't too bad at all. Two valuable loots in the main room, one in the right side room, and then one upstairs in the main room. This actually shouldn't be too difficult for Dingus. In theory. However, I observed something interesting with Dingus on this run. He never actually climbs the middle stairs. Why, Dingus? You've climbed them before. I watched you do it. I've even made a note that you did this before. You don't have a problem with other stairs. In fact, you climbed the other stairs multiple times in this run. And I've seen you climb the middle stairs here as well before. You had it this time, Dingus. All you had to do was something you've done plenty of times before. How did you let this one slip through your fingers? Unfortunately, the next two runs are, although both the agency, equally tragic. Dingus needs to deliver a lot of wine, and apparently both times he consumed a little too much of it himself. He gets a little eager, and careens out of the entrance. Anyway, we have another agency run starting up shortly afterwards. Dingus starts making quick work of this map. There's no valuable loot upstairs in the middle room, which is what did him in last time, so it's just a matter of him not being a big doof. Fortunately, this time he isn't a complete idiot and the level goes extremely smoothly. Wait, hold on. He's going up the middle stairs again. Do you just get stage fright or something when there's actually something valuable up there? And so there you have it. Level completed. He has done the agency, the hardest of all the levels. So I should be happy, right? I should be excited, right? But honestly, I'm not really that excited this time around. Why? Because he's still kind of an idiot. But you know, this is a pretty complicated problem space. Dingus needs to learn to be able to solve for multiple different buildings with loot in random locations. And he also needs to learn how to engage with physics properly. So I figure, let's keep training him. How smart will he get? Will he be able to consistently complete even levels like the agency? And how will I tell if he's actually getting smarter? Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you <laughs> to graphs. These are some graphs displayed on my tensor board for Dingus's training. The two main graphs I'm interested in are cumulative rewards over steps and episode length over steps. The reward graph is pretty straightforward. It's the average reward each of the agents are earning over steps. And the episode length is how long each episode is going on for average. An episode in this case being one attempt at a map. Maps only end if Dingus succeeds at the map, or if he falls off of it. So as long as the rewards are going up, and the episode length is going down, that suggests that Dingus is getting much better at completing rooms on average. Steps in this case can be sort of thought as analogous for time. In the case of Thief Dingus environment, 2 million steps are about 40 minutes of live training, and 20 million is about 8 hours of training. So at this point, we had a success at about 5,578 seconds approximately 92 minutes, with a step rate of around 42,100 steps per minute of training. That puts us around... here, on the graph. Close to the 4 million step mark. Are these numbers good? I don't freaking know, but I'm super curious to see how good we can get Dingus to go. So what if we skip forward about 4,000 seconds, about 66 minutes onwards? That puts us at around the 7 million step mark. Hey, that looks better than before. Does this actually equate to Dingus being better at the game in practice? Oh, yeah, hey, here's the artist pad. Finally, a chance to finish that up. Yep, okay, so he's doing a lot better. Yep, he seems to be much more reliable in the simpler buildings. But what about the agency? Can he consistently finish that one? Well, while he starts really promising, once again, he doesn't look up the hecking middle stairs. Dingus, why? Why is it only when there's something up there that you don't bother to check? Fine, you stink. Let's skip forward some more. Right after we psychoanalyze this situation. Uh, d Dingus? Uh, Dingus, stop. D what are you doing? Do I need to censor this? Right, that's it. Let's just get to the point. How good can Dingus ultimately get? What was his performance about 3 hours later, at the approximately 20.3 million steps mark? 
Well, that looks like an improvement, but what does it actually look like in action? Okay, well all these smaller levels look really promising, but what about say, the agency? And what about say, if there was loot upstairs in the middle room? Because you know, you've been doing so well with that dingus. Oh, you just, you just went up the middle stairs right at the start. Yep, that would solve that problem. Ah, okay. And uh, oh, you're actually super okay with checking the middle now. Well, there you go. He's actually a pretty good little cube thief now. So there you had it. Turns out Dingus actually got pretty good at generically solving a whole bunch of different rooms with random item placement. Thank you so much for watching. This one was a heck of a challenge to put together. I also got sick for a whole dang week, which put me a week behind for work, which really delayed things here. And I spent so long fine tuning things to try and make Dingus good at all the edge cases so he'd be super consistent. I did 68 separate runs with a whole bunch of different parameters, different level and agent reward function tweaks just to get this into something I was super proud of. If you think about how much training that is, holy crap, that's a lot of training. This one was a little different, but I'm glad I gave it a shot. So thank you everyone who made it to the end.